Here's how to make an endless runner. Thanks for joining me on the canvas. The first thing we're going to do is add an object, add a sprite object. We're going to name this player and we're going to add and import our images. I have them all lined up here. If you would like these images, link in the description below. Add them. Now let's go to our behaviors. Let's just make sure everything's lined up. All right, go to our behaviors, go to platform character. We're going to turn off the default controls, turn off this and this one, hit apply. Now we can go ahead and add our player character to the canvas, just somewhere here on the bottom left corner. And we need to then add a new object. We're going to go to tile map and we're going to create around here. We're going to set this to the tile size, name it. And then I'm going to import the tile set that I have here. Now we're going to go ahead and select the area that we want to add collision to. Hit OK, go to properties, and then we're going to go and add the platformer and disable the grab on that. Hit apply, add that into our game scene. And now we can scroll over here on the side and select whatever we want to paint with. So we're going to grab this one for now and I'm going to stretch it all the way across the scene. Try to do it in one stretch. Now that we've got that in order, we can see that our game is nice and idle and nothing's happening. Time for us to move on to the next part. Make sure you give yourself a quick save. And then we're going to go ahead and move our character down. Now that everything's in place, we need to make the next part of our generator, which is an object sprite. And we're going to name this the uh, room gen or room generator. I'm going to make my own custom sprite here and we're going to set it to 32 by 32 and then select a color and fill that in. Make sure we can rename this if we want to. Might as well be organized. Hit save and then hit apply. And we're all good there. We're going to add that to the top corner and shrink it down to one cube. And I forgot to hit apply there. So we're going to go ahead and just set that back to 32. There we go. It's time for us to get situated inside of our event sheet. So we're going to start by adding an event and adding the condition for beginning of the game scene. Hit OK. We're going to then add an action and we're going to look for center uh, and center the camera on an object. We need to select the player and continue on from there. The next step is to add a zoom level and that's just for us to get a good visual on top of our character. I'm going to zoom into about two. You can leave everything the same. Now what we're going to do is add a camera Y offset so that way our camera is always above our player. So we're going to go camera and we're going to check for the Y axis. Now we need to enter in here the player's Y location and we need a minus which in GDevelop is upwards. And for this one, we're going to do 98 just just because it's going to be 98 pixels above the player. We're going to now let's make another condition and we're going to duplicate what we did before. Double click on it and make sure we go to the X position and do the exact same thing. But this time we're going to move it to the right of the screen. And now when we preview this code, we can see that our player has a nice offset and it's like the perfect position for an endless runner. If you want to tinker with it, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and start adding comments here just to let you guys know what's going on, making it a little bit easier for those who skip my video and only look for the parts where it's relevant. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for everybody who watches. I really appreciate you. If you made it to this part, let me know in the comment section. No one's going to know. There's no words on the screen. <laughs> All right, anyways, so now that I've got my comments in place, we go to our player and type simulate because we're going to be getting the right key press. And that's so our player is always moving to the right as it should be in an endless runner. So we're always moving to the right. Our camera is going to be following us and to add a jump key. We're going to add the condition key pressed space, but with a capital S. It's a keyboard key. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this and add the simulate jump. So we're going to go to player and then again simulate. Oops, sim simulate. There we go. And then we're going to go to the jump key pressed. And now when every time we press the space key, we should jump. Now what we're going to do is go into our project and go down to our external layouts. If you haven't done external layouts, it's all right. Just follow along from here. We're just going to name it zero as in world zero underscore one as in level one or chunk one. We're going to add in our game canvas, which lets us copy anything over from it. And I'm going to paste in the level as it was for the, from the game canvas. All an external layout is, is the same thing as the layout from the game scene, uh, which is connected to a external event, or in this case, the event sheet from the game canvas. 
the next thing that we're going to be doing is checking the player's location or rather the distance of the player to the room gen queue that we created earlier. So make another event group or event and click on the player and check the X position of the player. So we're going to be checking if we are greater than a position from the room gen minus 256 on the X axis. And that'll let us see when we're creating the level. And then we need to go to add action. We're going to go to create. And we're going to be looking to create an object from an external layout. We're going to choose the level. And then this will be room gen uh, X position and the room gen Y position here on the Y location. And then zero as in position zero or layer zero. Hit OK. And now from here, what we need to do is check our game. And you should be able to see that as I get close, it's going to create another level and as we get close to the next stage, it's actually not going to create one where we're going to fall. And the reason why this happens is because we need to delete the previous room gen that existed after we create the room. So that way we only have one marker as we're moving forward. So it'll create the original room, delete the um, green marker as we get close to it, and then create the room after that. And it should do so in perpetuity, uh, meaning forever. And there you have an endless runner. Now we can change how far away our player is from this to make sure that it's at a distance that we don't see it generating and it happens off screen. And for the next little bit here, we're gonna add another comment and work on our animations because currently it looks bad. So let's, let's put our animations up just a little bit for organization, call this the animation manager. And we're just going to add a few children to this. I got to add down here. There we go. And then I can just add a couple of event groups. We're going to start by targeting the player and seeing whether or not the player is on the floor. If the player is on the floor, we're going to be checking the player's animation or setting the animation. And we're going to set it to the idle or run animation because we don't need to stand still. The next step is to copy our players on the floor, double click on it and change to see if we are jumping. We're going to duplicate that again, double click on it and change to um, is falling. And in this case is not falling. We want to invert that. And then we can copy our animation change, go from idle to jump. And then here as well, we can take the player uh, falling and copy paste, change that to fall. We can delete this and preview our game scene. As you can see, our animations are working great. Well, here's a game development challenge for you. Using what you've learned, let's use variables and random and range. Go ahead and pause the video now. If you made it this far, congratulations. Here's my code on how to randomize room generation. If you want rooms like mine was at the beginning of this demonstration. Thank you again for watching. Remember, happy game making, and I'll see you in the next video.